So a few days ago, I was building a massive space battleship carrier thing. Naturally, I wanted to put some guns on it. Then I realized that a lot of these systems aren't actually discussed that commonly. Like sure, some bits and parts are pretty well known. I'm sure some of you watching know how to make a stabilizer. Some of you know how to do some of the other things that will be covered. But I just wanted to make a video that covers all the topics related to making a decently advanced turret network, for lack of a better term, and how to basically just putting all that into one singular video. The first topic is before you even start to make the actual logic parts, which, I mean, there aren't much of it, but anyway, before you do that, you have to figure out where you're going to have the turrets themselves. And this matters a lot. So ultimately, what I see in a lot of large ships is instead of doing some form of advanced linking of the turrets, a lot of the time they just have either one, all of them on separate controls, or two, all of them on the same controls, or three, very large groups of them using the very similar controls just in a broad area. Obviously, you have less precision per section, and every single section of turrets isn't exactly the most accurate because they can't always be synced with their different edges and limits, so you kind of have to design around that. One of the first things in relating to placing the turrets is understanding the axes of rotation. Here I have a pretty basic test setup. You can see that the turrets go up and down, left and right. When facing forwards, it generally works really well. In this version specifically, you could see that there's also similar turrets mounted on the sides. In this example, I'll be using turrets that can spin around 360 degrees both along horizontal and vertical axes. You generally want to have the same priority of axes, the same priority of the direction of the servo on every single turret. As you can see here, some of the turrets have the first servo going horizontal. Some of the turrets have the first servo going vertical. This results in errors with the alignment. As you can see, when you go, when you look mostly straight forwards and you shoot, generally, it can have pretty good control. Overall, it doesn't change too much and it's pretty effective. But as you can see, if you start spinning pretty far off to the side, it starts to get wacky. And this comes from, as I said before, the order in which the servos are stacked. If you place a horizontal, generally, as a rule of thumb, the servo that is connected directly to the hull, or connected the lowest, will have a quote-unquote higher priority, and will generally work better. When you're on ground, you're generally fighting along a relatively flat plane. You don't need to look up and down much, you mostly need to look side to side. Which is why the first servo is generally placed parallel to the ground, so that then it could spin around and look around 360 degrees. And because most turrets don't need to look directly up or directly down, that servo is placed second, so that if there's limits in the ways, such as the rest of the body of the craft, it's not as big of a concern. And that axis doesn't need to rotate all the way through. What the problem, the problem starts when you have different pri priorities on different turrets, because then some of them will give more quote unquote priority to some axes, but not others, which results in them desyncing. So you will still probably need to end up grouping your turrets. However, not nearly as much with these systems. And for the first of these systems, there is avoiding quote-unquote friendly fire. I say friendly fire because I don't really know the right term, because you're really just shooting yourself. And I guess you are your own ally, so I guess friendly fire is a valid term, but whatever. Basically, if you have a set of turrets that are in the front and in the back, that are part of the same turret grouping and controls, and you want them all to shoot, but only when they're not shooting yourself, this is how to do it. 
All you really need is just a couple of sensors, an AND gate, and that's borderline it. It's a really simple system that you can hook into your things to make sure that you don't shoot yourself constantly. Just to make sure to set the distance of the sensors uh, to be however big your ship is, about that length. Obviously smaller, it depends on your sight lines, just eyeball it, trial and error. If you keep shooting yourself, just increase it. If it's not, then decrease it. Another thing to remember with this system is that, one, guns do not emit bullets from their center point. They emit bullets from where their barrel is shown. And two, sensors do not shoot the raycast from the center, they shoot it off from one of the sides. What this means is that you want to get the sensors where they're projecting their line as close to where the gun is going to be projecting its projectiles to, you know, keep it from shooting itself. So that is a potential error that you run with this, but past that, it generally works pretty well. The next thing is complex depression. So depression, when talking about turrets, is how far down the turret is capable of looking. For a lot of tanks especially, this is a pretty big problem, seeing as how they need to generally look down at least a couple of degrees, but also they need to be pretty short and stubby and small so that, you know, they're a smaller target. But this also leads to very little depression. So this complex depression system helps with that under some situations as well as a couple of other situations which also help. Basically, sometimes instead of being perfectly even amount of depression on all sides, some vehicles have an uneven amount of depression. Now normally if you just have an even amount of depression whenever you're pointing to any direction, generally you could just program that into the servo to limit, to limit it at that degree up and down. However, what if you want to look farther up than you do down? Or what if the amount of down that you can look changes as you rotate your turret? Well, that's what this is for. Basically, using some sensors, it can detect when it's about to when the turret is about to hit the hull and where it's connected. When it detects that, it just sends a signal to turn the servo up. It's as simple as that. Naturally, you can link these systems together with other turrets so that they stay in line with each other even if only one of them has that depression system to keep it in line. What this means is that if you have a set of turrets, it will grab their depression angles from all of them and make sure that none of them collide. A similar system can also be taken, rotated 90 degrees, and prevent it from running into a wall or something to the side instead of down, or maybe even upwards if you need to flip this entire design. Generally, it's a pretty simple design that works pretty well. These turrets specifically are asymmetrical, so they don't work going both ways, but yes. However, there is a problem. If you just put a servo, sorry, if you just put a sensor directly into the servo, and you're holding the down button to aim down, it won't work if you run into an object because the down that you're applying with your keyboard is perfectly canceling out the up applied by the sensor, meaning that it gets stuck and does not go up or down, meaning that if you move side to side and you run into a small incline, it'll glitch out. The solution for this is simply using servos to decrease the amount of force that your keyboard is applying into the servo so that the sensor has priority. And as said before, this system can again be crosswired with other turrets just as well. Generally, for any very complex turret system that needs to fight on like very weirdly mounted turrets, it needs to be able to look in a lot of positions. This is generally the loadout that I use. Just complex depression systems and avoiding friendly fire with some sensors. And generally, it works really well on like 90% of weirdly shaped battleships. And for the final point, 
stabilizers. This is probably the most well known of them, but thought I would throw in a, my own video about how to make them. Just you, just like how you have multiple turrets, you need to make sure that these also have the same axes priority. If they don't, then as you turn them, they'll get out of alignment and then they start throwing up errors and it all gets wacky. So generally you want to keep them in line with the turret itself. So yes, you can have the entire stabilizer unit as a separate thing, separate from the turret, but you're gonna need to make sure that they stay aligned. Or you could just mount it directly onto the turret. And for the stabilizer, don't really have much to say. Make sure that you have tight tolerances on both the compasses and the angle blocks. Make sure that you have hold position on because that plays a pretty big effect on making the actual stabilizer be pretty smooth. Make sure not to have your rotation speeds set too high because that can make it have a very jittery look. And also make sure that you apply your settings to for manual control only to the gun servo. Make sure that your stabilizer servo is free of controls. You don't need a second servo when you're using a stabilizer for your gun. You can actually just link your manual keyboard controls into the same servo as your stabilizer controls for your gun. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the end of this video. Pretty interesting stuff. Can be used on some pretty interesting turrets. And I hope this helps you. Goodbye.